Hello, everybody. It is 8 p.m. As I promised, 8 p.m. November 24th. I'm here having this life lesson. Привет, by the way. Привет. I'm going to be waiting for the viewers to come, uh, to those that are on the channel, to come here. What's the point of me starting with no viewers? But let me check if it works or not. I'm going to go on my phone and see if it appeared. Yep, I, I hope it did, since I have one viewer. Okay, let me actually get the, the comments uh, and all of that so I can see it all. You know, uh, should have done it before. I'm sorry, guys. Should have done it before. Hey, guys, those who are joining me right now, what's up to everybody? Um, live control room. Let me let me just get the comments so, so I can see what you all are. Not coming so far, but those who are here. Oh, hello. I was about to say, those who are here, can you please uh, say something in the comments? But you already did. Thank you so much. So I can know that you're here. Um, я тоже люблю занятия грамматики. Um, today we're going to talk about aspects, as uh, you can see from Priet, as you can see from the name of this uh, video, of this live stream, I guess. Last time we were talking about um, basic, like basic greetings, uh, a conversational Russian. And the topic that somebody suggested was this aspect. I was going to make a video and release it on Saturday, but I thought it's going to be a good topic to talk about in the live lesson because it's a broad topic, something that is very hard. Uh, and I was going to explain that here because you might have questions that you don't understand something and I can explain it to you all. So, yeah, let's do it right now, right here. Hello, so happy to see the live. Yes, me too. I'm so happy to see it too. Okay, um, you know, in Russian, as, as some of you might know already, there are two aspects, perfective and imperfect. Perfective and imperfect. I'm going to write it down like this. And the main difference between them two, hey, Jacob, uh, between them two, is that one is kind of, Finished action, another one is not finished action. So, perfective would be finished action. Finished, yeah, that's that's finished. I'm trying to write it all quickly, you know. Finished, unfinished. Um, well, I should, I, should say, I should say finished and in progress. That's the thing, okay, in progress. So basically, um, when you think about aspects, I want you to think about this thing. You know, like in English, we, uh, we say, I drank coffee and I was drinking coffee. So I drank coffee would be perfective because it's finished. I drank coffee. I already did it. It's finished. The action is finished. And if you're talking about I was drinking coffee, it's going to be imperfective because it, it is in, in progress. In progress. So I'm still drinking coffee. It's like a, you, just, you describe a progress of something that was happening or is happening. And the same is in Russian, okay? We just call it different, different names. And the thing about um, English compared to Russian is that when it comes to English variety of meanings, we use tenses. It's like we have present simple, present continuous, present perfect, and present perfect continuous, and the same with uh, with past and present uh, and future. Different verb tenses. In Russian, it's only three: perfect, uh, present, future, and past. Only three, and we use to separate, and we use uh, the aspects to separate different meanings. So basically, we have six verb tenses: is three past, present, and future with perfective and three past, present, and future with imperfect. And that's how I want you to think about this topic, is uh, we just have to, you know, show our, our uh, how rich our language is 
through aspects and through different, you know, uh, prefixes, suffixes, infixes, and endings. So let's get to some of the other, you know, uh, descriptions of perfective and imperfective. When it comes to perfective, it's um, uh, formed by prefixes mostly. Formed by prefixes. So how we separate um, perfective from imperfective is we add prefix to perfective. Then we also have suffixes, or another way to call it is infix. It's when you put, like, um, you add like a couple of letters into the word, not before, not after, but into the word. It's a good way to explain that, not, not so intimidating now. Right. So, yeah, it's not so intimidating. It should be easy to understand because I want you to feel, to understand it instead of, you know, just drill it and just learn it, but in a, in a good way, in a, in a way that you understand it, not in a way that you struggle with it uh, to get it right, you know. So, yes. Um, as we, we talked about imperfective already, it's duration. It's another way to say it's in progress when, it's, uh, um, when it lasts for some period of time. And then we have repeated action. Repeated action is when it, it repeats over and over and over again. And that's what we use uh, in, um, imperfect. And as I said already, this is going to uh, be like a simple one. Like I drank coffee, and this is going to be continuous. If you compare it to English, that I was drinking coffee. So, just to, uh, just to sum up what I said just now, perfective is simple, finished. You've already done it. Imperfective, not finished, in progress. It's uh, something that lasts longer. It is continuous. I was drinking coffee. Between this, these two uh, aspects. So let's get to the forms now and how we form uh, these two aspects. <clears throat> and if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna use my notes because you know I I don't want to forget something that is very important. And to be honest, when I was doing this like uh, aspects when I was researching, it's so funny how when I speak Russian and, and when I write in Russian, I never think about grammar like this. I never break it down to this like small little you know parts and when i'm teaching it's like i'm learning the language over and over again by myself myself too not only that i'm teaching it i'm, I'm also learning it learning it myself and every time i'm discovering something new something that I didn't know before especially with this aspect i never thought about aspects in this way because i never had to explain it to anybody but now i'm thinking um of this as more you know Russian as a professional now instead of as a speaker so I found it funny the first in fact let me ask the questions first hi Peter Virginia speak with a little English I'm learning but understand a lot and really want to learn Russian soon well why don't you start right now learn it right now Sabrina learn it right now over here with me and with other uh, be fluent subscribers and uh, viewers and community members. So uh, let's get to the forming now. How do we form uh, perfective and imperfective? First and the main is by prefixes. Prefixes is something that we put in between uh, in, in in the beginning of the word. For example, igrat. Igrat is um, is um, infinitive of the word to play, to play, and it also it, it is also imperfective, imperfective because it's igrat it's like a it's like a progress it's a it's a long lasting activity it's igrat, but if we add poigrat, that would mean to play it's like only. Uh, only once. So igrat is like to be playing. Igrat, poigrat is to play. Um, but in fact, let me use past tense to you know maybe show it a little better because 
with infinitives, it, it doesn't work as well. It, it's not really easy to understand with, with um, infinitives. So we just replace two with L, and it's going to be fast. So поиграл, it means I played. I played. So let's say um, я поиграл в компьютер. I played the computer. So I played the computer. I'm not playing, and I was not playing. I played already. It's already done. And if we just say играл, it means I was playing computer. I was playing computer. Let's say uh, you come to your um, to your house, and then your mom sees you, and, and she sees that you have red eyes. Why did this happen? Why, why do you have red eyes? And you know, you're not smoking or anything, just like a little little kid. And you say, "Yeah, I got off computer." But I was I was playing the computer games. That's why my, my eyes are red. I'm not trying to think of, you of, of anything but computer games when it comes to red eyes. Okay, so um, so that's the main difference. I играл, I played. Играл, I was playing. So we add prefix prefix po to the word. And that's why it makes it perfective. Okay. I'm gonna add this little thing um, to to this um, particular form. Is that depending on the uh, prefix, the meaning will change. Okay. So, for example, uh, if we add, okay, let me. I will um, write it down next to. Okay. If we say Я выиграл. So if we add we instead of for, it's going to be I won. So I played and I won. Just because of we changed uh, we changed uh, the prefix, it changed the uh, the meaning completely. Instead of saying I played, we say I won in that game. So I was playing uh, tennis and I won. Я выиграл игру. I I won the game. See how Russian is so flexible and so it has such a big variety of different meanings, and it's all because of prefixes and suffixes. But I'm not uh, touching the suffixes right now. So prefix uh, is gonna tell us what's the meaning of the word, and we have a whole lot of uh, prefixes. Let's say if we say proigral. As you can see, it's the same root, igral. If we say pro igral, so the uh, prefix is going to be pro, it means I lost. Just because we changed little prefix with same root. Everything is the same, just a little difference in um, in the prefix, and it changes the meaning like this. Pow. Instead of pro igral, I won. Pro igral. I lost. Too much. I know who it is. Здорово, Вадим. Как дела? It's my it's my friend from Russia. Um, thank you for for coming here. But um, he's he's Russian, so he's not gonna stay here for too long. So if we change the prefix, it's gonna change the uh, the meaning completely. And it's uh, that's why we have such a big variety of different meanings in Russian. And that's why I love it because in a little difference in in a, in a word, you can change the meaning completely. But if you're the beginner. If you're just starting to learn aspects, I want you to forget about different prefixes and just learn one pair of words. Let's say with igral to play, you can just say igral, play igral. So just uh, these two um, words without any other prefix. So just just one pair, just two words. And every time you learn a new word, let's say you learned. Um, you learned a word CDH, it means to sit. Okay. So it means to sit. And if you will ask, or if you will uh, look it up, just look up another verb for perfective. This is imperfective. If it's without a prefix, it's imperfective. So just try to find a word that is going to be perfective. And in this case, it's going to be. So it's uh, we add po in the beginning, and um, just learn it is learn 
new words in pairs, perfective, imperfective. It's going to help you a lot in the future, I promise you. But don't think about different, um, different prefixes. Just learn one pair. It's going to be much easier for you in the future. And that was prefixes. That's how we form um, perfective forms with prefixes. Now let's talk about another form, um, a second form, which is going to be with, um, with endings. Let me use an another ink because that's kind of, you know, I'm running off black ink and to buy new ones. Um, second way to do it is with endings. With endings. For example, the word that is shot. Reshat means to solve. To solve and um, I, I should say to be solving. To be solving. But uh, if you want to do the perfective form, it's going to be a sheet. So the only difference is is this. So we replace a with e. A with e. Um, I, I I want to ask this this guy Peter with too much to leave this lesson. <laughs> Because he's Russian, he's just playing with me. Yes, Vadim is correct. Yes. So annoying. Them friends do like, right? So this is gonna be imperfective. This is perfective. So imperfective is to be solving, решать, and реши is perfective to solve. To solve. Okay. So you see how the little change in ending changes the aspect. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob, um, for saying it. Um, it can change the meaning entirely. Just one little letter. One letter changes the, changes the whole meaning entirely. OK? And I'm, I was trying to think of another you know, verb to use as an example, but I, I, I could that was a big problem for me to find a word. And if, if something comes up to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it as an example too, because this way is not very popular. The most popular is um, prefixes. So if anything, uh, this is not so common. So you can um, also with this word, you can also use prefix uh, way to change the um, the aspects as well. So it's gonna be erishat. You can also say parishat. And it's going to be perfective as well. So, uh, yeah, the, the second way is to use endings, to change endings. And once again, there is no way to predict how to change from imperfective to perfective if you don't know before beforehand. So, if you learn a new word, learn how to change the aspect. So, don't just you know learn one word and, and be okay with it. Learn two words. And preferably memorize them. Okay, I'm not uh, trying to push it on you, but it's going to be hard in the beginning to get to know uh, aspects and kind of memorize it all and understand it all. But you got it. You're going to get it. I'm not stressing about it. I'm not worrying about you. You're good. Just be persistent with it, and you're going to learn it. So second way to do it is with endings. Is we change from. Uh, one letter to another, and it changes the aspect. Okay, it's just okay. We're just gonna let him be here. That's okay. Uh, another way to do it to change from imperfective to perfective is gonna be the reverse from imperfective to perfective. Is that what I, what I just said? Doesn't matter. Okay, so the third way. Is to use infix. Infix is uh, something that is in the word. The way we say it in Russian is suffix, 
but I'm not sure if it's even a word in English. So we're gonna use infix because I know that it's there. Infix. We just reached ten viewers. Yay! First ten. Um, infix. For example, um, the word is рассказать. Рассказать means to tell. To tell, to say, well, it's more to tell, yeah. Рассказывать историю, to tell a story, yes. So it's going to be more to tell. And um, that's going to be perfective. Perfective. Uh, imperfective, on the other hand, will be this. Imperfective would be рассказывать. Oh, this is kind of going down. It's okay. Рассказывать. Uh, so we add this if over here to make it imperfective. So this one is going to be to tell. This one is going to be to be telling a story, for example. So we add this if in the, into the word to make it um, imperfective. And it's not only if. It's sometimes of, if, yef. It depends on the word again. I'm just going to go over different ways to say it. said in two ways before. Um, try to learn how to say perfective with imperfective. So learn it in pairs. Yes. Learn perfective and imperfective at the same time. Okay? At least try to. I know it's going to be hard, but at least try to. It's going to help you a lot. Um, what other word can I use to um mm, let me let, let me think about it um okay we used um we used the word we got before it means to, uh, to win we got it means to win, but we're gonna use this form with infixes to make it imperfective again, and I'm gonna show you how. So we pam 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 we igrivat, and this is gonna mean to be winning. So to win, perfective. to be winning. So you can see that this is just one action. You just did once, uh, you won or you, you, you win, but this is gonna be duration, something that lasts long, to be winning, to be winning, okay? So let me uh, look at the comments before I move on. Thanks so much, you are my real teacher. I'm, stu uh, I'm studying at Faculty of Arts, Russian Department, Career. Cairo University in Egypt and then everything from you. Well, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate that you say this. I'm so happy to help you. For the week, I'm sorry, I need one say. Can you spell those? What's what's the difference? Um, okay. Meaning say? Well, what? Okay, let me put it down for you. And guys, we have one more uh, form to, to go over, so let me just answer the phone. Привет из Италии, привет из Америки. So, I'm not sure if uh, your name is Taher, Taher. I'm not sure how, how you say it in your uh, in your language, but let me answer your your question. So, port is entrance. It's to enter. Выход is exit. So it's two different words. Okay. Put so if, if you just hear how I say put put so it's the first two letters v and h together put put okay and when you say выход it's going to be выход выход so instead of put it's going to be выход выход so it's two syllables instead of one when it's put it's one syllable put put and then um, 
when you use, when you say the second word, выход, there's going to be two syllables. Вы, хат, вы хат. And the difference is entrance, exit. As you can see, just one letter, one letter A, oops, changes, it, changes the meaning to the opposite. Вход, entrance, выход, exit. And that's why I love Russian, so flexible. So, I hope I answered your question. Let's move on with the topic. Um, and the last way to change from imperfective to perfective is by you have me thanks really thanks you're welcome um another way is we have exceptions we always have ex exceptions of 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 the rule exceptions they're always there always going to be there in any language so for example brat is to take imperfective i had to think about it too uh, imperfective, and then the word for perfective would be взят. взят. So this is going to be. So bright would be to be taken, взят would be to take. Okay, so it's two different aspects. As you can see, they look nothing um, like each other. So it's they're way different from each other. Okay, so bright is imperfective to be taken, that is to take. So that's just how Russian is. We have a whole bunch of exceptions, a whole bunch of things that we cannot explain because, as a language, Russian is very old, it goes back to I don't know how many years, and it was uh, it's been evolving from that to, to now. So we have different things that just unexplainable that were just in a language just because they were they, they were there even though uh, you know before we even uh, didn't have any writing in the world so people people were just speaking a language as they wanted to and then they had to somehow form uh, different rules of language so that's why some some things like this like exceptions exist is because um, used to speak without writing can you use those words in a sentence okay sure um bum, 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 bum. okay i have a good one i have a like a you know like a phrase so let's use the first word um first which is bright um for example you're learning russian so all of you learning are learning russian Oh, uh, yeah, and in Polish, brat, zat. Yeah, I hope, I mean, I guess it's it's very really, uh, similar. So, in a sentence, you're learning Russian, okay? So you're taking lessons, you are taking. So it's continuous, okay? Um, it's gonna be brat uroki. Bright уроки. So it's to be taking lessons. So it's a continuous kind of, you know, um, action. So it's not that you just took a lesson. Uh, you are taking lessons. And let me actually type it in the, in the comments the actual sentence that you can use because I don't think it's going to fit in the board. It's going to look all messy. But um, for example, um, you can say, yeah. Uh, Shoot. Oh my gosh. Я брал уроки Федором. So I was taking lessons with Fedor. Or uh, you can say this. Um, брал уроки у Федора. I was taking Fedor's lessons. Because like, you know, uh, when I have lessons, I, I teach Russian. Um, and you can take my lessons. And if you use this example, you can say, Я брал уроки у Федора. So I was taking Fedor's lessons. I was taking. That's why брал is imperfect. Okay, because I, I, I was taking. It's a duration, it's a progress. And then if you use the word взять, 
Um, Jets. Ah, shoot. Oh, Jets. It means to take. Um, for example, you go to the store and you have to take and you have to get, in fact, milk. In Russian, we, uh, we say взять молоко. Молоко is milk. So взять молоко is to take uh, milk. Or if you go to the kitchen, open up the fridge, you take milk. Взять молоко, I need to take milk, I need to get milk. And that's how we use it in a sentence. So взять would be to take only once. You take it. You got it. Bright to be taken. Like lessons. You're taking lessons. It's a progress. It's a um, it's a it's a long process. Let me actually write down the type, the the, uh, the actual sentence with взять. Мне нужно взять молоко. You need to take milk. You go to the store. You need to, talk, you, you need to take milk. You need to take milk. And that's it, guys. I hope that this lesson was good. It was helpful. It kind of flew by so quickly, to be honest. Half an hour like this. Bow. Gone. Um, rest of the lesson, we can take. I can take questions, personal uh, language lessons. Also, please. Uh, let me know what you want to see on the channel, what you want to, you know, watch. Maybe there is something that um, you don't understand that you want to understand. Please put it on the comments so I can write it down. And I promise I base my, you know, I, I use your ideas for the videos because it's one thing what I want to explain and it's a whole different thing um, what you want to see. And um, yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, so let me know what you want to see in the future on, on, on the channel Be Fluent because I can never know what you guys want. I can never do that. I can never guess. You too. Have a good day as well. Could you listen in several sentences? Um, you mean uh, when it comes to Я брал уроки у Федора? Is that what you mean in uh, different endings? Or what are you talking about, Rob Perez? Please let me know because it's not clear for me so I can answer your question correctly. So let me know what you want to see on the channel in the future. I have some ideas, but I want you to, you know, let me know. Um, hmm. Well, because it's not conjugations, it's cases. It's Russian cases. And in this case, um, we have six different cases. And the first one would be with Fedor. Fedor is going to be the fifth case. In, um, in English, let me just translate real quick. Um, bum, 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 bum. So I can give you the correct information. I don't want to just, you know, tell you something that is not correct. Just give me one second. It's instrumental case. So the first, я брал уроки с Федором, it's instrumental. Right. Thank you so much. Instrumental case. Um, because it's like, so it's like a tool. Fedor is a tool with Fedor, and that's why we change the ending to Fedorom. Om, we add Om to it. Um, the second sentence, я брал уроки у Федора, at Fedor's, uh, and this is going to be, I think, genitive case. Родительный поддерж. Yes, it's going to be genitive case. Thank you so much. I mean, Kim, thank you so much. See, you know Russian better than me. <laughs> you just know the translations better than me. Thank you so much for helping. So yeah, it's just gonna be different cases. And you can see that there is, the um, preposition is different. So first is S is with, and U is like at. So it's gonna be different cases, that's why. Do you guys have any more questions? Any more suggestions for, for the videos in the future? Do you have any comments? Do you have any feedback? Let me know you have the time right now. The questions that you might have uh, live. I would love to do that. I love helping you all. And um, what's about подробности? What do you uh, what do you mean? 
what can I say about it? You're welcome, Robertus. Пожалуйста. Пожалуйста. I just want to uh, let you know uh, what I'm going to have on the channel in the future. Um, for the future, can you tell about the what, what about it? What about it? Подробности uh, is details. What about подробности do you want me to talk about? Because I'm not really sure. What can I say about it? So, some some plans. I want to take one more song and translate it and transcribe it and talk about it, just like I did with uh, G. Wood, uh, Ocean and the Star. The same thing I want to do uh, in December as well. Talk about New Year and Christmas as like a cultural thing, since we have Christmas and New Year coming up. So I thought it was going to be interesting. I want to take another series of uh, Winnie the Pooh and translate it to. So it's going to be cool. I want to talk about um, different phrases that, that we have, maybe idioms, um, in in Russian, just like in, in English, it, it's raining cats and dogs, it's same kind of stuff in Russian. Uh, talk about that. Talk about tsia uh, and tsia. More Russian cartoons, of course. There, there's going to be one on, on Winnie the Pooh, as I said before. Second, uh, second Winnie the Pooh. I'm going to have it, or I will try to find something else. Maybe it's not going to be Winnie the Pooh, but something, um, something different. I like songs. Me too. I'm a musician. I like songs. I can play the guitar for you if you want me to. Kidding. Um, so I like songs. I would do songs for sure. Yeah. Let me see. What you, uh, can you recommend any good books for Russian phonetics? Honestly, Cryptoid Alchemist. I have no idea about any Russian textbooks on phonetics. The very uh, like I would like to tell you is phonetics. You cannot really read about phonetics because phonetics is it's written. So I would recommend you hear and listen to Russian speech. Maybe look up some videos on YouTube to uh, you know hear how Russians talk. Uh, read um, phonetics. You can only hear them and say them and practice them. So, things about good and bad things and terrifying that what I mean, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay, I'll think about it, take her for sure. Uh, Masha and beer, of course, that can be too. That can be there. I'm just going to think, um, I'm just going to think of uh, different cartoons that, that I used to watch. We have good ones, actually. We have such great ones. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna find something very really interesting. I'm not gonna just, um, I'm not gonna just uh, choose one that is not interesting, of course. Good question. If I like a song but the lyrics is written from a viewpoint of a female, then would it be weird to sing that for native speakers? Yes, I would say it's weird. Um, yeah. I would say it's weird, but if you can, sometimes you can change it. Let's say uh, from "skazala," so ending "i," you can change it to "skazal," but rarely though. Uh, try to see, um, try to find songs that don't have um, really like genitive or um, gender, not gender, gender. So yeah. Masha doesn't speak. I'm not sure about, about that. I don't remember if Masha speaks or not in, in Masha and Bear. I will see. I will see for sure. Could you do a video on poetry? Mm, that's a good one. I'm going to find something of Pushkin that I can translate and maybe explain. Well, the the, the thing with, with poetry, though, complicated. That, that's why it's, it's art. is because everybody can understand it differently. And if I just translate it, it's going to have my viewpoint on poetry which I don't want to do. I'm trying to do it as subjective as possible. So that's that's the thing about poetry. It's, it's, it's hard to translate and, you know, give it to you all because I understand poetry, uh, poetry differently. And I don't want to have my uh, point of view affect your point of view. But we'll see. Of course, I, I'll think about it, of course. My friends and I send both on VK. That's, that's uh, this is where we can listen to language pronunciation. Yes. So, um, back to uh, Crypto Alchemist. 
if you have a friend who speaks Russian or you have um, you know a teacher that you have lessons with what I would recommend is send voice messages to each other uh, that, that way it's not written uh, well you can actually write uh, the type type messages and then say them as well so you can practice your pronunciation and messages in VK is going to be helpful or not VK uh, WhatsApp you have uh, messages on iMessages almost everywhere now so send voice messages to each other so you can you know conversate as well as practice language so that's my advice to you all oh and by the way yeah I'm gonna have a lesson a video on how to speak Russian how to speak Russian how to uh, understand it how to yeah how to speak Russian but a book I can find are ancient yes I'm in university in the next course and to transcribe Russian dialogue in Russian oh can find a different version of IPA but see what yeah if you if you are in the in the university and you're studying Russian I'm I'm sorry but I don't really know any any books and that's uh, that's I think that's a, a problem with uh, education sometimes is that they do something that is not really useful and it's not really important and I'm, I'm I know that you know that phonetics um, in Russian conversation is not very important but if that's your profession then you gotta do it but I don't know in any any books on phonetics but thank you guys it was a good time with you all it was a good time hanging out together uh, great lesson let me know if you have, if you have any more questions productive on the channel next month because it's gonna be my vacation I'm uh, I'm gonna be on break so I'll have more time to make more videos so stay tuned you guys thank you so much for uh, sticking around and I will see you next time bye bye